Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to learn how we can invoke any HTTP calls or REST API calls directly from Power Apps without taking help of flows. So for this, we are going to invoke HTTP calls using HTTP Azure AD connector that right now we call as, as HTTP intra connector. So I'll just go to connections and I'll show you what connector we are going to use for that. And we are going to type HTTP. So over here, you can see like I have this one connected HTTP with Microsoft Intra ID. So earlier we used to call that as Microsoft Azure ID. And so right now you can see I have actually uh, added one base URL to it. That is my SharePoint site. If I just uh, copy this one and I'll just go. This is my SharePoint root site. And as I'm going to do the post calls or the get calls using for my SharePoint, then I have to specify the base resource URL as SharePoint while creating this connection. So I, if you need to create any new connection, you have to click on new and then go to this HTTP with Microsoft Entra ID pre-authorized. That means you are going to pass on the login credential while creating this connection. So you can say connect directly cloud services, base URL, you can specify the base URL of the SharePoint, like if you wish to like work with the SharePoint REST API calls over here. So in our demo, we are going to add one user to one of the SharePoint group using a post call. So calling any get, doing any get calls are very much simpler, but we are going to take a demo of like doing a post call so that we can construct our request body and pass on the headers along with the body and then make that action happen. So we are going to take that example. So while creating this connect connector, you have to specify the base URL. Just put the base URL to your uh, SharePoint root site as we are going to work with the SharePoint root site only. So I'm going to paste it at both the places and create it. So once this connector is created, you will be asked to log in the credential for yourself, the user who will be running. As you can see, it's a premium connector. So the, the user who is running this app where the connector is being used has to have the premium license for Power Apps. So that's it. So I'll just close it because I have already one connector created for the same one. If I go to my connections, I can again add it that connector. I can click on this, add it, and it has the same connection base URL which I specified just now. So till now we are done with creation of connector into our Power Platform environment. Now we can go to Power Apps and we'll start creating one app from blank. And I'll choose this, I'll just say this demo, adding a SharePoint user. So basically, whenever we want to add any user to a SharePoint group, then we don't have any other way uh, other than calling the SharePoint REST API endpoint for adding that user. Uh, because if we wish to add the users to Microsoft groups, then we have the connector uh, for directly calling the Microsoft groups. So if I go to my this data sources, I'll show you that as well. If I just say office groups, then we have this direct connector available, which allows us if I add this one, which allows us to us to add the users to a specific Microsoft security group, not to the SharePoint groups. So you may have your applic your site with multiple other uh, SharePoint group rather than just default security group. So I hope like you understand the difference between the security, the Microsoft groups and the SharePoint groups. So right now I have just opened. This is my com site members. This is my SharePoint group and which is having member group ID of five. So we are going to do an operation of adding one user. I'll just remove this one user, uh, this account, so that we'll be adding this user via our Power Apps button click. So right now I have just two users added to it. This is my group ID five, and we are going to do a post operation. So as I, I was telling you, if I use, if I, let me just add one button quickly. I'll just say add users user to SP group and on this select if I 
say office 65 groups add member to a group so over here you directly see that endpoint or this uh, method which can be used leverage to add a this user to the office 365 group to the microsoft group not to the sharepoint group so for that we are having a different way which for which we have just added one connector so i'm just going to remove this one and we'll just directly go to the actual required stuff so i'll just start typing http microsoft with intra id pre-authorized the connector which we just added so i'll just use this connector and I'll add my this connector to it so now on click of this button i wish to call the sharepoint rest endpoint so i'll just open my notepad so that i can tell you like which endpoint is going to work with us so this is the endpoint which we are going to call the the sharepoint site underscore api web site groups users and we are going to pass the the login name of that person which we wish to add to this group so first of all i'll just start writing the http pre-authorized invoke method so over here you can see i have this get post put and delete so get in one of my video already demonstrated uh, when we used to call this http with azure ad rather than microsoft intra id so it was a one year back video i think uh, there i took an example of like a get request where i was fetching the users from the groups or from the list library but over here we'll be doing a post operation as i am going to write or add one user to this new group so i'll just use post and over here you can see i have these two sort of methods over here which takes a different sort of uh, parameters so it's url then header and body as blog so url you can simply i can copy this from my notepad and save and we'll make a more space and and in headers as we are going to do a post operation we have to pass the request header the content type so that uh, in what format we are going to pass the request data and as well as in what format we are going to read the response so for that we have to create this header table so this header is nothing but a table with a key and value pair so i can copy this header one from this my notepad and we'll just paste it i'll just in paste all this information into my videos description so that you can directly get that so header is done so in body so body is if you see like it's a blob blog means it's a it's expecting a file which is a base64 type we can construct this base64 file from our request body so right now i'll just put a variable which we are going to create for this request body and i'm just going to close my method name over here i'll just go to i'll just make a space at top so that we can write some additional stuff so over here as i said like this where file we are going to create so just forget this for a while and we'll start setting the request body for our this uh, operation so what request body we are going to pass to it it's a login name and the actual membership the login id of that person so if i just go to top to my notepad you will see like i have this request body which is nothing but a variable setting up a variable with the required input type like it's a login name i'm just going to pass to my this request body login name and this user the actual membership id or the login name of this user so this we are going to construct and now because as i said like body is expecting a block which is a base64 file so for constructing the base64 file out of our this request body we have to do some other operations so i have actually right now uh, copied this entire stuff from one of the blog which actually uh, describe how you can convert the plain text into base64 so if you look at this example where i have this where file which is a variable and this data type is plain text and plain text input type over here we have this input text 
So this text is nothing but this request body variable which we have constructed prior to this file. So we can just copy this entire stuff. I'll just paste the same stuff into description so that you can directly use it rather than struggling out. So I'm just copying this and I'll just paste this one. So this will actually create a base64 blob type for me which can directly be passed to post that post call. So now I have this web file created with my input text which is request body which we have passed over here and I can keep scroll down and we are ultimately passing this post call with this URL, with this header, this body over here. So we are done with these three steps of setting request body, creating blob out of it and then calling our pre-authorized invoke HTTP method of Microsoft HTTP intra ID. Mm -hmm. So by this call, we are going to make a direct call to SharePoint to make this operation happen rather than like relying on any flow or waiting for that response. So I'm just saving it and we are going to run it for a test. And parallelly, we are going to open the monitor tool so that we can see how this HTTP call is being made and what request we are passing and what response we are getting. So I'll just run it and I'll just click on this add user to SP group and I'll just go to my monitor tool and I'll scroll down directly to my invoke command invoke HTTP request so which is my last command so in if I go to request I'll open up this body and in this body, you can see we are passing post method URL to our SharePoint user group directly, site groups, users, header, container application JSON, and body is this is page 64 string. And if you decode it online, you will see like what request parameter you are passing. So I'll just quickly do that so that we can be sure. Uh, page 64 to plain text. And I'll just copy the copy it base 64 and we'll just decode it to plain text we'll decode it so once it's decoded you can see i have this login name whatever i was passing to it so that means we have a proper formatted the request body and in response we can expand the body and we'll see in response we are getting this all the attributes related to this new user which we were trying to add so that means it's added successfully and I can verify and refresh my page to see whether that user exists or not. So this user is added to SharePoint group. So we have achieved the objective of this video. So we actually use the HTTP Microsoft Intra ID invoke HTTP method with a post method and passing the request headers and body and converting that body to base64 and then achieving the operation without writing any flow or without taking help of Microsoft Graph API calls. So this is, a, this is an operation which works directly on SharePoint. So it doesn't, I mean, we took an example of share adding SharePoint user, but we can directly, we can do multiple post operations for adding items or for doing any other operation. So that is it for today's video. And if you have any question, then please do drop your comments and I'll just put up everything into the description for this video, whatever other code I have written. And that's it. Thank you.